Okay. We'll call the meeting to order. Welcome, everyone. We will start um, with a prayer by Pastor Ayers from Lifeline Connect Church. Thank you. Let's pray. Lord, again, I thank you for today. I thank you uh, for the leaders that are here. Lord, I pray that you give them wisdom and guidance. And Lord, I thank you uh, that uh, you call us all to a relationship with you. Lord, I pray that our lives and uh, the very presence that we are here today gives glory and honor to you. Lord, again, we thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 We'll do the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And, and to the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Bridgeway? Yes. Jones? Here. Baker? Yep. Asset? Here. Beverly? Present. Barth? Here. Would someone please uh, make a motion to amend the regular council agenda to reflect that we have Zoning Board of Appeals notice in there and then also uh, some legislation. Well, the legislation's already on there. So just to add the Zoning Board of Appeals. I'll make that motion, Mayor. Okay. I'll second. Roll call, please. Baker? Yes. Jones? Yes. Ridgeway? Yes. Barth? Yes. Beverly? Yes. Bassett? Yes. You have the October 1st regular council meeting minutes in your packet. Are there any additions or corrections? Or questions? Make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. Roll call, please. Bassett? Yes. Beverly? Yes. Barth? Yes. Ridgeway? Yes. Jones? Yes. Baker? Yep. You have two approved bills list, uh, payment listing, it's called now. Uh, one was on the table tonight, one was in your packet for approval. Are there any questions? I have a few. Um, Kent answered uh, some questions for me. Uh, one, we're paying for the John Deere Gator, and I was told it was uh, paid for by the um, I sent a copy of the invoice to the beautification treasurer today to reimburse the village for it in full. Okay. Firehouse resources, 10408 That's the stabilization and equipment that goes out. And that's all in the budget? Okay. Precision concrete cutting, 1539. We paid that last pay period, last meeting. I'm checking on it. Making it public. <laughs> um, and then Braitman's, almost $6,000 to Braitman's. Their vests, bulletproof vests. Please. Okay. The third from the bottom. Who is that? Kara? Yeah. She's our new EMT. She's new EMT. We reimbursed her for her um, background check. Okay. Okay. No. I move we uh, pay the bills. Hmm? I'll second. Yeah. Where's the old chief? Done? Yep. Okay. Roll Did call. we get a second? <coughs> oh. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Roll call, please. Ridgeway? Yes. Jones? Yes. Baker? Yes. Barth? Thanks. Beverly? Yes. Bassett? Yes. Thank you. So, next we have um, Justin Kuhn on the agenda, and um, you got a picture of the proposed Welcome to Hicksville sign in advance for you to look over, and uh, I would ask you if you are all satisfied with it to make a motion to approve it? Unless anybody has any problems with that sign, I, I move we uh, approve it and move with it. I'll second that motion. Roll call, please. Baker? Yes. Bassett? Yes. Jones? Yes. Beverly? Yes. Ridgeway? Yes. Barth? Yes. 
Thank you. Justin, would you like to go to the podium and talk about your next issue? Um, oh, I'm this sorry. Is, this is first stone sample of the sign that's going to go on the top. I like that. For, for the sign. base. And then uh, back to the sign issue. We raised, and I'm not asking for any more money, so I don't want to come out like I am at this time when I say that. <laughs> we raised 5250 bucks on the GoFundMe page. And when I came up with a $6,000 sign price, is just when I stopped at Kurt's Produce up there and asked them what they had in their sign with the fillers, and that's how I come up with the 6000 So the GoFundMe raised 5250 and I know that the city was going to match it with $3,500, which is awesome. A lot of the people that donated only reason they donated because they felt that it was awesome that you guys were throwing in. I think we almost might have enough money to pull off uh, two signs. Uh, I say we put the first sign in on FWT and see how it looks and see how it goes and make sure everything's good. Taylor Klepper has the money in a, a building Hicksville account I think he set up. And then what I would ask is if we are short or whenever we come back and I'll turn in all the bills or to whoever would like to see them. I don't care. And then see if you guys could come up at another time down the road, not now, but match our 5250. So 3500 now to get the ball rolling, but maybe next spring we might be short on another sign, and it might be know, what a thousand bucks. I'm just making this number up. What's what the total a, cost of this one? I don't, we don't 100 percent know. Uh, Dave Brown figured around 3500 bucks to make the sign. Uh, today I went to Jane and Stone and got the sample. They figured about 500 bucks a column for the material to do the, the stone. And then uh, we're going to pour a 4 foot by 12 foot concrete slab so that it will be so when at FWT they can mow around it and we don't have to have any landscape. They've thought that we could then put maybe some flower pots. And I think when we put it up, our plan is we're going to get some corn shocks and put sh corn shocks and some pumpkins and stuff on the platform to have kind of the fall look. And then we thought we could switch it out. I've talked with uh, AEP about lighting it also, and they're checking into if they can hook to the uh, the street light that's there. I guess the way the street lights work is every light you guys pay a a fee for the light, and they don't have any small lights to get a number. So you, have you guys ever seen the like the parking lot lights that they put on the poles? That I think they're like ten bucks just to have the light. And then, you, as anybody, do you guys know what I'm talking about? They're about this big by this big. They go on the pole. You can get them from AEP. It's not a street light, but it's they have one out of Casa. They're going to see if they have another light, and that's the only way that they would let us tie in. If not, they wanted to have to set a whole another meter base, which I, I don't want to do. That's going to look like crap, and it's a whole other process. It would just be easier to tie into the light. So he's going to try to find a, a smaller light and get a price on that. So. That's just update. Versus sign actually going. Yeah, okay. I saw where there was dirt, and then I got. Yeah, when I went and talked to FWT, I asked him if if I could have a piece of their property. I said anywhere down in that field we could put the sign, the, the alpha alpha field. And then after all the money we raised, and it's no secret, all eyes are going to be on this sign. So this sign better be good. So I thought, what if they plant corn, or what if they plant beans, or anything down in that way? I mean, if we put the sign up and the farmer plants corn and he can't see the sign, everybody's going to be upset. So I went back to FWT and said, I'm grateful and I respect the, the decision to do that, but here's my problem and here's my thought. And they're like, that's a great idea. Why don't you move it up in our yard? We'll mow around it. We'll maintain it. And uh, he gave me another spot. So that's why we moved it. So now it's going to be, so where that field starts, there's two drives going in. And there, there's a section right there. It's right in there. I just called in all the locates and had it marked out there. You're going to be at the edge of the, if you're coming into town, you'll be at the edge of the farthest drive? It would almost be directly across from the driveway at the Shuffleburger lot that I own there. If you would imagine that in your yeah. head, it's almost right across the street. There's some bigger trees, and we were so going to set between it. between the two drivers? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. There's a street <laughs> light right there, and uh, that's where we're thinking of putting it. So that way nobody has to maintain it, and then we're, no corn or crops will be grown in. So... I know that uh, tonight Dave wanted to get the approval from the council before he ordered in the material. He's going to make it out of that plastic signboard, so it would be you know, like 30 years. There won't be any wood on it. And uh, Dean Houston is going to make a metal bracing to hold the sign up. You know, so it should be nice. I said, but what I was going to ask is, would would you guys match our 5250? But you don't have to match it now. We have enough. If we're short to do another sign, um, I just. I think that I will hear, and some of you might hear, some of the people donated just because you guys were matching. And 
Not that I'm trying to if shyster. we do that, we need to have it in the budget for next year. You know, we get 35 <coughs> this year, right. right? We've already approved that. Yeah. My only concern is we have cut the general budget 20% of all the people. Okay. That's my only concern right. as finance well, committee. I'm not a math guy. What would it be to bring it up to from 35 to 52 right now? What is it? 1700 so bucks. <coughs> but so I'd rather see it in the budget okay. if we do that. Me personally, I think we should wait and see how this turns out and go from I, there. I see what the actual costs are. Right, right. I agree. I don't want it to be a fortune. And like Dave said, we, we, he was swamped with this fall fest. <coughs> now he's just kind of started working on it. I want to get that done. But we want to make it where it's still, we can take it to other spots and put it in and not cost an arm and a leg. What other uh, place you might put it? Were you thinking? Some, some other specific I would spots. say another location. There's a coffee <laughs> shop across from the school going on. Be a good spot for one. Wrong side of the road. <laughs> I would put it there. You're coming in on. I two. think if we get it, if that, that, I mean, I would more than willing put it there. But I think if we move it up by Dairy Delight or that, that ODOT building, you could catch two state routes with one yeah. sign. Yep. If not, you got to put. The two. beautification committee has already talked about getting the. You know, we have a welcome <coughs> sign, not we, but the Kiwanis have that welcome sign out by the ditch, and it's we can't even get access to it anymore because it's such a steep. Thing down there, so we were going to try to get that sign moved into town anyway. Gotcha. Um, but I think that it's just amongst a group of people, and I would say you guys and residents. <coughs> well, I don't care. We just need to figure out where we feel the next spot where a lot of traffic comes into town and focus there and turn this into a three or five year project and just keep going around. And have it look nice. Let's uh, <coughs> let's get the first one done, and I would <coughs> uh, that we take this to a vote for full council to vote so that he has an answer to move David along. We did that one. vote already. <laughs> we approved it. The first one we voted. Approved the sign. Voted the first one. I thought we had to You made the motion. Sign. We did approve the sign um, before he even got up. Before I got up, I thought you guys did that. Uh, you made the motion, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you did. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> The we sign. we yeah. agreed to 3,500. Yeah, 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 you agreed to 3,500. Yeah, yeah. I'm just the thing would be, let's look at the first sign, see how it looks. If it looks good, if we're a little bit short, to make the second sign. Would you guys put the 1,700 in? But that's not even this year. I mean, it's kind of we're going to be running out of weather before we get yeah. this one in. When do you think this will be completed? <coughs> By Thanksgiving. So Dave said it would take him a day or two after he ordered it. Michael Sturry and the Mennonite Church is going to pour the concrete and stuff and put it in. And Johnny Yoder has got an excavator. They're going to drill <coughs> footers in the ground. So it's below frost and put it up so it doesn't. It'll be good and solid. So that they said as soon as as soon as we get to approval, they'll start on it. So hopefully next week they can put the concrete in. We're going to put some sleeves in so we can pull the electric. I think that'll be the longest thing of getting <coughs> this. And then Dave makes it. Hopefully by Thanksgiving. Great. You got a lot of people working on it, so good. Yeah, a lot, a lot of people. people. Oh. <laughs> okay, so the next thing that I was here about, and I want to say thank you guys for that. Before I start on this. The next thing I was here about is I would like to. Uh, <coughs> To do something with the ground that I have back behind Casa ground, I think there's about 3.5 acres back there. I just uh, ended up buying some more ground to square up the property line that was kind of screwy. And I get a lot of phone calls a week of people looking for housing in Hicksville or rentals. So on the back page, I don't know if everybody got one of these, I never know how many for now. But on the back page, this is something that I was thinking about building back there. Just a, like a triplex similar to what Mel Bontrager has built around town. <coughs> Mel and he's had them rented before he's even been done building them. But my problem is how do we get utilities back there? The water and the sewer. So I drew out on a paper a red line and I went back there and looked at every angle I can possibly think of and I've talked with the water and sewer committee and it's kind of got shut off down at Westwood because there is a piece of property that got bought there by a homeowner and it kind of shut the road off in the utilities. I've talked to some people on Chicago Avenue about purchasing their home and putting a drive back off Chicago Avenue, but it's not cost feasible. So the only other way that I thought to get utilities back there would be in between the church and the police station. There is a grass strip that runs there. The way I understand it is the sewer is on the other it's on the Olsa House side of the street and the water is on the police department side of the street. When I met with the Water and Sewer Committee, uh, 
we talked about it for quite some time and I went out there afterwards and measured and it looks like where the city's property line that you guys own on the police department is about 10 foot of grass from the pole to the pavement and then talking to the sewer department again they said most easements that they do in town are 12 to 15 foot is, is that right <coughs> 12 to 15 foot easements for construction anchor anywhere from 15 to 20 but depending on what you're sticking in right mm -hmm. i thought that i would like to run a water line and a sewer line back there to that property to feed it with the utilities and I picture in my mind if you're going to do a water and sewer line you could trench it in so you wouldn't have to do it and maybe Ron can can confirm that I don't know I'm just asking could you trench it in Ron with a big trencher instead of getting a backhoe in there and digging it'd be tough to, to uh, trench your sewer because a sewer by code has to have granular underneath it and everything and gotcha uh, and, and, uh, of course, lasers have come a long way on these machines, but still the, the greatest accuracy gotcha. is, is an excavator. What I was wanting, so at, with that grass strip being 10 foot, I thought that when we talked to the Water and Sewer Committee, it was a 12 foot to 15 foot easement. But the problem is you guys have asphalt there. If, you could, if I could stay off the asphalt and put the water lines in, it's going to be brand new. It's going to hopefully be quite a long time before you need any replacement or digging the yard back up or anything i would it was what i'm asking for is an easement in between there a 12 or 15 foot easement which would carry over into the parking lot but if the parking lot is damaged or marked or marred or whatever i or the landowner is responsible to <coughs> fix the parking lot back to its original condition of what it is now i don't think you would have to get on it i could probably talk to kent brown and if we had to use a backhoe or something, get on Kent's and just reseed it all there. But I'm just trying to find the best way to get, get utilities back there without redoing the whole city to do it. Uh, that's the only thing I could think of. The On the one page I got, people was asked, how would the cars get back there? And I drew a little blue line that would show them going through Casa and then go to the back. And then I put a... Uh, I don't know if anyone else would like to see it. I drew this just in my mind how kind of a road would lay out. Anyone else wants to see this? Here it is. And I want to try, I mean, I've already got a blacktop almost all the way back to where the field starts now, so you're just talking a little loop. I would start, run the utilities in, back behind the police department, and start them, and then work in phases around there as, as we needed it. So I guess I really don't know where to start. I know I talked to the water and the sewer committee. They said, you know, you have to go to the plan commission. You got to get it rezoned, and you got to get an architect and get it all drawn up. And I, I know that I did it out at the golf course, and we spent a ton of money to do that. But there's no sense to spend any money until you figure out where you can start. I mean, I think we can get the ball rolling without spending money because I might get shot down in the next meeting. And there's no sense to get an architect and draw the whole big elaborate print. Like I said, we had. I like the picture of the house. Uh, like I said, we had Justin asked to meet with us, and we kind of took a look at it. We didn't know if there was already an existing easement through there. So we checked with Troy, but then Kent found out there is not okay. a current easement. Um, I know there might be a gas line running through that. So, um, from what they found out from the research, there wasn't. Um, is that a mansion. And I don't know if that. <clears throat> is that a mansion? <laughs> right. Yeah. Is it? No, 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 no. A mansion home. You're asking. No. No. He built it. Right, yeah, no, I was just going to stick build them, just two by four on site. So with this kind of process, we kind of looked at it. We didn't have a real main problem with where how where he kind of wanted to tie in at, but then I didn't know if it went to, I don't want to step on toes of a different committee or push it off to a different committee with uh, easement acquisition and, you know, feasibility of running through that. I know we need homes in town. Um, Justin's local and trying to get some of the things, you know, motivated with both out at the golf course and, and this type of subdivision. Um, if Justin talks to Kenton Brown and Kent Kenton is, you know, is agreeable, do any of you have a problem with the granting an easement there? I don't. I, don't I, I would want everything 
legal and in writing because we're not all going to be alive forever. Right. I would say that's the only way to do it. Uh, Troy, you, would sure you do the easement or. draw up, or Justin would do it? Or he, you know, he could have it done, and I just review it and make sure it's okay. You know, the only thing is we could never build over that easement. That's right. the only drawback. But other than that, it's still our land. Right. I mean, is it something reasonably? I mean, it's not like you got to bear a lot there, and you might want to stick up a building for storage right. or something like. I mean, yeah. it's just a little path that's back there for whatever green space and. Why don't you buy the PD building and property and we'll move them back? I the said that on the sewer and water committee. I said I'd like to buy that someday. I would. I, I told them this, and I know that you guys don't have one night, but man, you you guys need to work a deal with Farmers Merchants Bank. That's the most beautiful building here in Hicksville, and it sets empty, and it's Six huge. Grand. I would go to them. I'd say I don't know where you guys bank, and I'm not trying to get into it, but I would say I'll transfer all the town's money <laughs> to the Farmers Merchants Bank. <laughs> you guys promote your community oriented you have our bank you have an empty building what better way to support small town than put all our administrative six grand in a there? month so what, do you guys bank with them <laughs> you should bank with them i'd take the money and i bet you guys could get a heck of a lot better deal can't do that i can't you gotta spread it out gotcha <clears throat> do they have it's i mean this isn't a topic to have on public but I would try to, <laughs> to that bank and work a deal with them so we need a motion to grant this easement. Is that the oh, next yeah, step? I'm not a big fan of the cut through Casa, all the you know traffic. Well, whatever happened? If, I know you. Let's say you own or lease that property out. I mean, it would be like SMTA, you know, letting people cut through clients to get to a housing addition behind right. their house. Then all of a sudden, they buy it. They buy the property, move another restaurant in, and then they put a fence through there. And, well, just so you know, I'm I'm not selling those homes. I'm going to own them all. They're going to be rentals. I'm going to build a. Or basically a rental community it's like southern hills but one story and i'm gonna own it so we gotta look down the road yeah i'm looking down the road right, and, you know people cutting through using casas as their driveway well as long as i'm the owner but the i also guy see leasing the schmitz i can see people cutting through schmitz property <coughs> into there too well then we don't get any housing next well, i guess but i'm saying it's all one property so i own the restaurant i own the hardware so i own the so one you'd have to i would have to sell, sell it as a whole or not sell or do something else to give you're not planning on making a public roadway in no and the guy leasing the front if casa leaves and somebody shows up and wants to run the front and says well you can't drive to get to your housing i'm going to say well you can't rent my building and i think anybody that owns the property would say that how many houses are you i i don't know i i first i just want to put up one it's get it rented and when it rents build another one and then build another one and I measured it. It's uh, 620. It's three and a half acres. 626 feet long, 340 across the back. Looking at it, I mean, you could get quite a bit back there. But I would say do it in phases and just keep going around. Um, so there, there's no magic number. It's uh, how, the dream would be fill it and have it be the whole thing. But I'm, I'm going to be honest. I like the looks of this style of, of housing. You know, for people that are one two three family unit kind of things where i like them better than the other ones you had brought to the table the problem that i have found is and i called and talked to dean yoder about building the villas that paul's built around town they quoted me 140 grand a unit i mean that's a one unit uh mel bontrager told me his are a hundred thousand dollars a unit he's got three so there's 300 grand in a unit i one time made a post asking hicksville about 750 dollars rent and people went through the roof well, I try to figure that if it's a hundred grand, your payment's a thousand bucks. So somehow you've got to get a house, a structure that's nice, that the rent can pay. You know, so if you're, I'm saying seventy-five thousand dollars, your rent would be seven fifty. But the problem is, in these, they don't have garages on them. When you, you know, the ideal world would be put a garage on it. But before long, you price yourself out of the Hicksville rental market. So it's kind of a fine line of how do you build it and make it nice, but yet still keep rent because these prices are insane to build stuff. Um, I just heard today that it's people figure $125 a square foot, and that's just for pretty much plain Jane. And as you all know, because I've been up here and talked to a lot of you, we can't hardly find a builder in Fort Wayne that can't build a house under 400 grand out at the golf course. That blows me away. I mean, 400 grand is a ton of money. In, uh, I, I'm partnered with the Amish on the hardware, and 
They say if these material prices are doubled and tripled, there's, it's expensive. I mean, concrete used to be $70 a yard, now it's $125 a yard. And lumber, same thing. So, Building's expensive. Believe me, if it was cheap, it would be really good for all of us. So, council members, where do you want to go from here? Um, well, I think Ron summed it up. We need to see it all. And I'm with Eric. Well, I, I, the access. We just, we're giving this tonight. I mean, the, in, no. the, the in and out of it is not a good Maintain situation the road, in my book. Your new construction <laughs> has sidewalks, trash pickup. But it's trash it's driving private. through cost to get back there. It's it's uh it's like in the water and sewer. They put one meter and they kept saying that meeting. It's a private. It's a private deal. It's not city owned, right. so it doesn't have to meet city specs. I don't have to have sidewalks. It's not a part of the city. You guys don't plow it. You Unless you're just giving us to us tonight and asking for right. it. Right. I'm not even asking for it. I'm not asking for it. Tonight. I'm just bringing it up and saying, is what do you guys think? What's the next step? Most, I mean, most of the time we don't even know the next step. I mean, we haven't even next piece of property in a long time. I mean, it's how do you do it? So we here. give water and sewage to Haver Drive. And they pay double utilities because they're not annexed into the village. So how would that play a part in the? the I would annex this into the village. Yeah. You're already in. The yeah. I thought that already property already is city yeah. owned. That's already. It's already. Yeah, that property okay. is yeah. in. So that's not. A but but then I <clears throat> my questioning his plot would have to be approved mm -hmm. whether planning it's commission it's eventually. Is there's tons of steps. It's right. probably a year. And project. we do require sidewalks. Okay. Well, that shoots her down. Then. Correct. The new. The other thing that's yeah. going to happen when too. When you build new. Yeah, it's a is right gonna, thing. One other thing that's going to happen in this also is the lot sizes. I think the lot sizes in Hicksler are 10,000 square foot minimums. So it's it, you have to think outside the box or it's not going to work. Variances if we meet would every, be requested. Yeah, if, variances and yeah, if we meet every Hicksville law, rule, of the sidewalk and the lot, then it won't work. But where else we put housing at? How do you make it work? I mean, I'm all about trying to follow the rules and do it, but doing the numbers it doesn't work we're not we're just pointing out to you yeah, some I, of the things too. that you need to that that we can kind of tell you right now you should expect is right yeah I know that it's a long process to do this it's yeah. this is one step in the 50 yeah. you know like the golf course as you know it's been almost a two-year deal to get it through all the steps well how about if we let them mull it over for a little bit Justin okay. Sounds good. well I would well maybe Troy wants to pipe up I'd say if you get a survey of the area done and a legal description, then you can show it to them. They'll at least see what's actually happening. Of the easement? Of yeah. Because yeah. Yeah. there have to be a legal description for the easement so it could be recorded. Yeah, but here's my, my point of that. That's going to cost me X amount of money yeah. to go do, and I'm going to walk in here, and the people that are already against it are going to say no, and I just spent 700 yeah. bucks to do that. So my point is, yeah. you all understand what's happening here right. with, by this. Yeah. If you say yes, uh, I'll, I'm for this step. Spend your money, go get the survey, get it legit. Okay, I didn't just blow 700 bucks. You want an answer on letting you bring water and sewer through that easement? Yeah, but not tonight. Right. Yeah, okay. just think about it, yep. and I don't want to go spend money to just Good hear thinking nothing. on your part. It's yay or nay, or what are your guys' thoughts? Yeah. And if that's the thing, let's take the the right way to do it and go get that step. And the next thing, go to the planning commission. Next thing, go to this commission. But I don't want to spend money to just get it shot down. So that's okay. it. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We are going to. You're looking at me like I'm skipping something, Cheryl. <laughs> we are going to. Uh, we have in our packet the cemetery board minutes from October 9th. Do you have anything to report to the all right there. public about that? No. Okay. Planning a few more memory trees, and we're looking to purchase a new mower and seeing about trade-in. And everything's going well, I feel. Great. The next meeting is December 20th at 4 o'clock, right here. Right here? All right. Then you have in your packet the beautification <coughs> committee minutes from September 24th. Um, and then you have a notice of a public hearing for the Board of Zoning Appeals. The Hicksville Board of Zoning Appeals will hold a public hearing for an application for a conditional use permit on November 7th, starting at 4 p.m. 
and that's in the office of the zoning inspector located at 108 North Main Street. The application submitted by Barbara Parker is a request to operate a freestanding birth center from her dwelling located at 618 North Main Street. So if you have an interest in attending that public hearing, it is November 7th, uh, 4 p.m., Zoning Inspector's Office at 108 North Main Street. And then we will go on to the Council Committee reports. You have minutes from the Water Sewer Refuge Committee from October 3rd. Um, Anybody like to comment on those minutes? Sure. I'd like to start off. Anybody have any questions on the um, first two items on there? Or I'm sorry, the first item? We talked to Justin today about the third item. <clears throat> in your, and you're supposed to have a map and cost estimates. We are remembering changing the Chicago Avenue project to phase two. Um, EPA required us to get a new engineer on board, show us show them the plans or the options. We have to pick an option and submit that to EPA for their final approval to move that to a phase two project. Um, again, this is kind of in your packet. It was loaded today in the mail and we got it tonight. But uh, we looked at three different options. Uh, <coughs> Jesse, Kent, Troy, um, Jeff, they were all part of the whole process along with the committee and committee's filling uh, it costs the most but I think option three we're trying to get as much water out of the system in the short term and the long term with any of these projects um, option three of course costs the most but it's going to have the biggest impact on our um, storm situation in that quadrant of our community um, it's going to alleviate a lot of the <clears throat> Chicago be completely um, separated come up the high turn left go all the way down high they're going to drop a little bit on the Antwerp drive storm and then take the rest of it up through to the uh, box where that storm had just been done this year uh, and completed so <clears throat> if we're going to see mom any projects especially along maybe Arthur and or Spencerville uh, down the road uh, they will be able to tie to that storm drainage um, we don't have to do this right away we need to make an uh, a option approval so we can submit it to EPA um, time is a little bit of the essence I believe yeah, can't couple <laughs> weeks over a deadline yeah. already um, but we think the amount of volume of water that's getting into that area uh, is going to have a major impact like I said we've talked about it we've had two meetings about this and um, we think this is going to be the best isn't that a lot of money to spend for something that's only going to accommodate just a fuzz over a normal rain? Can't we do anything to do it right? Well, we, we have recommendations. I mean, this is... I don't know, but to, to, to spend a, a million and a million and a quarter yeah. uh, and it's only accommodating just above a normal rain I mean that's all a two-year event is uh, that's a lot of money there's a bunch of money and yeah, it's not really too much different from what UMHT proposed back when this got brought up three years ago and I said that three years ago or whoever I think it was Everybody's been calling it just a, a couple year event. It's all with the panel, and I said from the start that's not enough. Well, you can't oversize this, or you'll not be able to get past the uh, either Brian or at Antwerp Drive. There's. Is there any reason why we can't turn and go to Shit Creek? Well. That's that's option three or option one. Yeah, was coming down and gone left. Call it, or yeah. You're not going to get as much water out of the headworks of the plant going that option. It's cheaper. So it depends on. I guess what you're looking. You're still got to look at phase three when we got that three or four million dollar monstrosity. We got to stick in if we don't get rid of CSOs. Mm-hmm. 
So do you want to spend the money now trying to save that or I mean, you guys is calling that you control the money. I'm, I'm just trying to get the biggest bang out of out of the dollar and and the only thing I know about it is what I seen in my packet yesterday and today. And it just seems like a lot of money uh, for no more than what we're getting. Um, like I said, looking at all these numbers, I mean, I thought we were getting the biggest bang for our buck for numbers. I mean, I know it's the cheaper, it's the cheapest route to go is to go tie it to that existing store back there on buying Westwood, uh, but that's not doing anything for our system. Mm -hmm. We are keep having at the head of the plant is where our main CSO issues are happening. We have eliminated several of them in the community by with the separations we've done, but the biggest hits are at the plant. So. The more, the more water we take from that point, or to get to that point, I think we're better off in the long run. And EPA's been very lenient. I mean, they we've we've asked them, kind of ahead of the, of the cart, say, will you approve this? And they said, no. You got to have plans. We want to see plans. We want to see drawings. We want to see the scope of the project. So we've kind of pushed it along, and. Um, opinion kind of option, but but. Like I said, I think these are good plans. I think Lee knows what we're trying to do and utilizing some of Antwerp Drive. If we do get the bigger range and we got the Antwerp line going out there, the storm is going to be able to add to it down the road and then also up to Bryan Street and get that get that water away from the head of the plant. Well, plus, this is just <clears throat> this is just the initial submittal to them. Ask, asking to forget the pond on Chicago, push this back into phase <clears throat> two. And they might look at this and say, no, they don't like what option we chose either. I think they would choose three over any of the other ones, but you never know. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I don't. At the T of Chicago and West High, you could go on out down the road to go to that creek there by Nolte's. Where it says yeah, the 42 inch first option is. I mean, that would help alleviate some of the pressure, also. Uh, Lee mentioned about the two year um, event. Anymore, we have them every year. Yeah. I mean, it isn't 50 year or 30 year. But see, if you upsize your pipes, you're not going to be able to tie in anywhere. Right. That's the problem. Right. And spend more money. Because he can barely hit Brian or South Main now without some issues so if you upsize it I don't know where you're gonna run the water to a ditch gone that direction but we do have flooding on Arthur Street so that'll help take care of that well we have, we have the I don't know if we still do but we had a lot of uh, flooding there at uh, Spencerville and High that still flood because we still get all the water down from here this would help Shaw Terrace especially. Those people have no hope of any relief until we do something on West High. So it would help them. Uh, and the old, you know, the old, some of the people along West High because we'd be disconnected. and stuff would get tied in here too as we go through. At this point, they'd just be running this. And then if we wanted to look at separating Arthur sometime. But I'm, but where the mill tile crosses here. Would that get tied in? Mill tile, I don't know what you're There's a big to tile that comes from Mill Creek Drive and comes out here and goes across. That got cut off up here years back, supposedly. Still runs a load of water. Mm -hmm. I don't think it shows up anywhere. Okay. Well, I'm not, I'm not ruling out because we found that mystery tunnel when we were patching mm -hmm. down there one time, so we don't know what it was doing. But now on this, I mean, once you decide, uh, let's just say you go with option three and then six months from now you decide, well, no, we want to go with one. I don't think they're kind of, I, this is going to be it. We don't have to, I mean, if you guys don't have had five years to do it, right. we're past that deadline. So they said get off the stick. I don't want to keep changing. It just costs us more money to keep changing in the scope of the projects and everything else with right. engineers and any type of thing we do we want to change with the long-term control project. If you guys feel comfortable, it's going to cost a little bit of money, but we can get Lee back in here. 
run all the numbers. You can talk to him. You can call him if you want to have a meeting. Well, he's going to end up with the same thing because he would have, he should have given us his best shot out of the bed. He did. He wanted to come tonight, and we thought we could explain it good enough for now. Well, I think I think it's I think three is great. I just yeah, just good observation. So hopeful that we could get, you know, maybe like a fifty-year event to, to handle the thing. Well, we can't. It says we can't, other than some design elements, and I think that's why he's gone with the sizes. If we would, if we would we uh, change it to the make it bigger, I don't think the EPA is going to care about that. And I'm sure when he comes out here. Uh, When he comes off of Chicago and heads down high, then I'm sure he's going to set up a manhole or a distribution well, we there. We don't know any of that stuff. Uh, yeah. And if we told him, hey, set it up so that we can hook here and go this way. Because, man, you could take a lot of asphalt in that short run right there. Well, supposedly, if people tied in, there is that storm line that runs in front of the PD now gone to the ditch. I think Wholesale House tied into that when Mark Savage redid them, at least out the front. I don't know about anybody else. They still do some out the back, but I know he did everything their from the wholesale dock. house here. He here, did their loading dock about here. five years ago. Yeah, and he came out across the road. Yeah, that's the only thing he fixed was the loading dock. Everything else goes out here and goes right back here to this manhole. So, <coughs> I don't know if we had any more questions or yeah. Let's get it submitted. We're already behind. But I think we need to take a look at, a at planning on adding some things, you know, set a manhole that'll accommodate a trunk that'll go to the creek and right. you know, so even if they approve this, this might not happen for four years, right? Five years. So we need a motion. Which options that we need now? Mm -hmm. I make a motion to go to option three. I'll second that motion. Roll call, please. Bridgeway. Yes. Jones. Yes. Baker. Yes. Bassett. Yes. Everly. Yes. Marth. Yes. Great. Do you have anything else for your report? Uh, no. Are there any other committees that would like to give a report tonight? Uh, the PFE uh, committee meeting, or we committee met uh, four thirty today. We just kind of went over uh, 25, around 25 applications for police chief. Kind of just went over them, kind of got an idea which ones we're kind of narrowing down the field. And they still have until the 20th of this month to turn in your application if you'd like to become the next sexual police chief. Also, we talked with uh, Officer Doctor. Uh, he said he had some uh, handguns and a rifle that had been in a gun cabinet in the police station for about 15 years now that hasn't been used, been back and back. <coughs> They belonged to the village and they were bought by Chief Sabo years and years ago and they were not being used and they can't get holsters for them that are locking, that are uh, police officer approved, or I guess police department approved. They're looking at trading those in and they need to get a rifle uh, and be able to trade those in towards a rifle, some ammo, some slings, and some magazines for the, the rifle and some other equipment they already have. They talked with the ammo can and they'd be able to do all that and not take any more money out of their budget. And, and uh, it was voted 3 though by the committee to allow them to do that. Troy, we need to have legislation to pass to approve uh, selling specific firearms, don't we? Or trading it or <coughs> anything like that, yeah. <coughs> also said uh, they're going to be, the morale is really good right now in the police department. They're all getting along real well. Some of them part-timers are coming in, stepping up and picking up some hours, off hours and weekends. and. Also, they're getting ready to do uh, some training on uh, taser, and actually, Officer Bostic uh, is willing and wants to, to get tased. So we're looking forward to that, and hopefully, we're able to watch it. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. Should I we do that on TV? TV? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good idea. Hey, Bill, you like to get that on <laughs> 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 XTV? <laughs> Thank you for the report. <coughs> Does anybody have any questions or any other committees that want to report anything? We will go on to the administrator's report. You know, the Chicago Avenue took care of uh, the change order on Chicago Avenue water line, which is done <coughs> actually a deed. Uh, I give all my stuff to share. I forget. It's around 5927 lower. So I do 
they had less paving than what they were figuring on. So that was nice. Otherwise, I just need the legislation during Troy's part for the paving, which I'd send everybody the advanced message if you got more questions about that. We can talk about it. Do you have figures on that for the side line to grind it? So we don't have to raise that catch basin lid that we hit every time we go through. They've got in for <coughs> Manhole adjustments and things. <coughs> I don't know about putting cement rings around them, but we've got to make meet them things anyway. for that. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> when are they working on that? Do you know? They start to... It might be early November. A lot depends on some of this stuff getting sent back in. And whatever. That's why this needs to be an emergency. It just came up about. I'm I've known it's been coming for now. several weeks, but. Stuff finally got to me about the middle of last week. You want to do it now or his turn? Or you want to do it? <coughs> you want to do it now, Mayor? Or what? Might as well. I move we suspend the rules and. I haven't even read it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just do it on the <laughs> regular. <laughs> 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 no. yeah. He said he didn't oh, care. Well, yeah, I don't. Yeah. But it's coming up. Well, we yeah. do it on Troy. That's fine. Well, that's good. Yeah. Anything else for Kent? Any questions or? Oh, oh God. All righty. <laughs> Well, then we will go on to the solicitor's report. <coughs> first thing I have is ordinance 2018-13, the first reading by caption only, an ordinance to amend the annual appropriations ordinance. And I think you need that as emergency. Yeah, declare an emergency. I move we suspend the rules. Second. Roll call. Which way? Yes. Jones? Yes. Baker? Yes. Barth? Yes. Beverly? Yep. Bassett? Yep. Second, third readings, ordinance 2018-13, by caption only an ordinance to amend the annual appropriations ordinance <coughs> and declare an emergency. So move. Second. Roll call. Baker? Yes. Bassett? Yep. Jones? Yes. Beverly? Yep. Ridgeway? Yes. Barth? Yes. <coughs> Second reading of resolution 2018-24, by caption only Resolution opposing state issue one. The next is uh, resolution 2018-25. Uh, first reading by caption only, a resolution reaffirming ordinance 2017-22 as amended to implement at sections 3735.65 through 3735.70 the Ohio Revised Code established and described the boundaries of a community reinvestment area in the village of Hicks, Ohio, designated a housing officer to administer the program and created a community reinvestment housing council and a tax incentive review council. Well, I'll tell you what, on this one, folks, I thought this CRA was well underway, and Cheryl is going to update you on what has happened with it. It was sent in with a resolution um, that was actually a revolving loan fund. By Mommy Valley Planning Organization. Well, yeah. Not <laughs> you. Not me. So then the guy called and said, you sent me the wrong resolution. Can you do the right one? So I did. But the date was wrong. It was too late. So now we have to reaffirm it, the original one. And then he says, we're done. We're good. And all these months, we've had a CRA committee sitting there just chomping at the bit to get started with their committee. And then our paperwork's been all messed up all this time. So... So it's an emergency, so I need it passed ASAP. So I can, he said he can sign off on it as soon as he gets it back. Move we'll suspend the rules. Second. Roll call. <coughs> Ridgeway? Yes. Jones? Yes. <coughs> Baker? Yep. Bar Bassett? Yes. Beverly? Yep. Barth? Yes. Second, third reading resolution 2018 25 by caption only. Resolution reaffirming ordinance 2017 22 as amended. Which implemented sections 3735.65 through 3735.70 of the Ohio Revised Code established and described the boundaries of a community reinvestment area in the village of Hicks, Ohio, designated a housing officer to administer the program and created a community reinvestment housing council and a tax incentive review council. And declared an emergency. So move. I'll second. Roll call. Bassett? Yes. Baker? 
Yes. Jones. Yes. Beverly. Yep. Ridgeway. Yes. Barth. Yes. And then resolution 2018-26, uh, first reading by caption only, resolution for the village of Hicks, Ohio, to approve a change order authorizing additional paving work as part of the contract with Ford Construction Company and declaring an emergency. That's what the cap was talking about. Make motions on the rolls. Second. Roll call. Ridgeway. Yes. Barth. Yes. Jones. Yes. Beverly. Yep. Baker. Yep. Bassett. Yes. Second, third reading resolution 2018-26 by caption only a resolution for the village of Hicksville how to approve a change order authorizing additional paving work as part of the contract with Ford Construction Company and declaring an emergency. I so move. Second. Roll call. Ridgeway. Yes. Jones. Yes. Baker. Yes. Bassett. Yes. Beverly. Yes. Barth. Yes. As long as they run that, would you be able to have a, like a signed copy by 9.15 in the morning? Because i got to run stuff from Longview Valley on my way to Archibald, so don't need a copy of this. Can we do it tonight? Because I've got to be in defiance of 8.30 in the morning. Yeah, as long as I've got it. To take okay. All righty. Okay, anything else, Roy, that you've got to report on? Nope. Nothing pending. So. Okay. so we'll go on to the department heads. Um, no one from the police department. You said anyone would be here. Oh, okay. And then we're going to have the fire chief. Are you representing the EMS also? Yep. All right. You didn't give me anything. <laughs> but I'll, answer any, I'll try to answer any questions you have for EMS. Um, the only thing we have coming up is the Carnival 27th from 6 to 8 after trick or treating. And Feather Bingo is in November, the 10th, I believe. Doors open at 4 30. Well, I'd like to congratulate you on the event we had last weekend. The breakfast was absolutely wonderful. The race we was busy. seemed like it went well. You have fire truck rides going on. and. A lot of people around the area here. Good PR for the community. That's all. Who won between the? Scott, who won between the police department and the fire department? Well, at the last minute, the police department backed out. So. Oh. Seriously? Oh. Yeah. So you won. So, you're, so we won by default. <laughs> so you're basically calling them out right here. Yeah. <laughs> Our runner was actually the one in charge of the 5K, and he's uh, one of the new firemen that took this upon to, to have the 5K, and he did a real good job. We had 67 runners. Awesome. Good. Yeah, That's we're, great. We're kind of glad they backed out because we really didn't want to send him running when he was in charge of the event. You didn't have a spare guy, did you? No. <laughs> uh, very nice. You guys did a good job. Thank you. Any other questions? No. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And then Park Director, Val? I have nothing to do. Okay, all righty. So we will go on to the fiscal officer's report. Um, I have the fund status report that everybody can get used to looking at, called cash summary by fund. And I also put on the table tonight the revolving loan for September. Thank you. And I was wondering about our latest one's not on here yet. It's so not, I, not. Ready, and we're not ready to start yet. He'll be on next time. All right. Thanks for the reports. Does anyone have any questions for Cheryl? Thank you. You want to say something else? Go ahead. Yeah, because um, I want flu shots for the next two weeks, Tuesday and Thursday from 8 to noon, if you approve the village paying. And they'll be at the pharmacy and they're $20. The last few years, uh, you've approved the employees getting the food down their expense. So that's what she's asking for. If you want to continue to do that, I would yeah. ask one of you to make a motion. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> Sorry about your luck, Kent. Do they take advantage of that program? You don't, we've you don't get twenty dollars back. Um, we usually about eighteen or twenty. So a lot. I'll make that motion. I second it. Roll call, please. Uh, Baker? Yes. Bassett? Yes. Jones? Yes. Beverly? Yes. Barth? Yes. Ridgeway? Yes. Anything else, Cheryl? Thank you. Not for me. 
Okay, well, we'll go on to my report. And um, so at the last council meeting, I mentioned that Michelle Wagner from Community Memorial Hospital and the village had been in talks about possibly Community <coughs> Memorial Hospital um, taking over the EMS service. And this was not done in smoke-filled back rooms. This was done right here in the council room with the EMS chief, the fire chief, myself, Michelle. You know, between here and the hospital, the meetings have been held. There's been nothing secretive. The door's been open. Um, just tossing things around. So there seems to be maybe some information going around town that leads me to believe that maybe we need to have like an open forum or a town hall meeting where anyone can come in and get their questions answered or be a part of the discussion maybe perhaps so michelle and i have said that on thursday the 25th of october at 6 p.m we could possibly do that here in this room if you feel that it is needed because um, I don't know, no one has, well, Zane and I have spoken about the matter, what time? but typically no one has, um, Nessus hasn't really questioned or asked any questions to me about it, but it sounds like you, some of you have been asked, so what are your thoughts on this? I think it's a good idea. Just I'm having the meeting or are you going? Oh, having the meeting moving forward in the future. Just an open forum for Michelle to be here and the chief and I, and just 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 tell everybody what we've discussed and why we're discussing it, and maybe you know answer any questions that we can about it. I mean, it's not by any means. You know, we don't have a contract. We don't. We're not like anywhere close to making this move as far as I'm concerned, but I think there's pros and cons for each of us. But somebody might have a better idea. I mean, maybe there's another solution to an EMS shortage, <coughs> EMT shortage rather. So we'll plan on having an open forum night then, six o'clock, October 25th, just to so we'll plan on that then. And trick or treats on the mayor's report, and we agreed at the last minute that was going to be four to six, the 27th on a Saturday night, and then everybody can go to the carnival afterwards at the fire department. Um, so I know all of you have, all of you council members have. Enjoy, have noticed the fun activities that's been going around town and and you know some things that that I just like to to mention is that the fire, again the firemen's festivities uh, were very enjoyable the Hoptober Fest uptown um, that was put on was really enjoyable two bandits presented a check to the beautification committee tonight for seven hundred dollars that they raised from their um, 0 0.08 K or is that a 0.8 K um, and then they also had seven hundred dollars that is going to go to helping hands so I think that was really nice of them to hold that event up town I was up there um, it was enjoyable. They had a polka band out on the street uh, in the afternoon, and then they had a band inside in the evening, and the donations were really nice. Um, Music Man was at the Huber Theater over the weekend, and it, it was well attended and just an awesome show. Could have wish you would have all seen it. It was very good. Lifeline Connect had their festivities out at their place last weekend, um, and that's always a really fun thing to go to, especially watching all the kids enjoy it. Pony rides and horse rides and all kinds of stuff. So I'm sure there's a lot happening at the school and a lot of things to congratulate everybody for and 
participate in you know activities that were going on in case anybody wants to mention anything else we'll say um, I drove bus on Saturday to Edgerton for the uh, GMC's and the girls varsity team uh, placed first the one sectionals I think I heard him say on the announcements this afternoon it was the first time in 31 years that they did that mm. wow. that's great they had the fire truck ride through town afterwards when I got back <coughs> Very good. Anybody else have anything to add? All right. I'm just going to tell you that the invitations uh, should have went out today to um, for the celebration of Hicksville's World War I Centennial Commemoration going on Sunday, November 11th at 1 p.m. at the Veterans Memorial. And we're going to have uh, speaker Mitch Yokelson um, for the event. And that day i believe cornerstone church is going to have lunch at 11:30 for veterans and then at five o'clock that night the fireman's auxiliary is going to have dinner for veterans at the catholic church so the time between i think the program should end around two last one hour at the veterans memorial and then the speaker is going to go to the catholic church basement to have just a question and answer time downstairs in case anybody would like to come down and ask him questions about World War I. We're kind of playing on the fact that we're the, we're the only community in the United States we found that has a road named New Sargon. And so he's going to speak about the Battle of New Sargon. So I think it should be really interesting. I, wrote, I read his book um, and uh, one of them. 47 days, how Pershing's warriors came of age to defeat the German army during World War I. It was really good. So, just want to make sure everybody keeps that on their minds. And then we have some people in the audience, and I think that <coughs> Mr. Evans, would you like to come up to the podium and talk to council? I know my boys don't carry the I reckon what's going on with, uh, between um, the communities at the uh, waterworks. Well, what I proposed was that we have so many commodities distributed all over town that Not perhaps... Not that many. Pardon me? Better recount. Pardon me? You better recount. There hasn't been that many. It's only been like three. Okay. Yeah, you want to take one away from us. Okay. Are you... Um, okay, so you're objecting to us yes, giving up the village's commodities. Yes, I am. Okay. All right. Well, that's why we put it out to the public so they could let us know. So I appreciate you coming and telling us your opinion on that. Okay? Is there anything else you want to say? I can say a lot of things, but I better not. Okay. All right. You and I are in the same boat. <laughs> <laughs> so is there anyone else in the room that would like to get up and talk about commodities or anything, any issues that you have? And that's not a done deal. No, it's not a done deal. Council is, that's exactly what we are asking for, for people to voice their thoughts on it. Just kind of let me know by <coughs> November. Okay. Refresh my memory. How many people are coming up? You guys have an account. I think they said 40. This, well, this past time we had around 45 families. It was around 72 individuals. Still part of Ballpark. I mean, that's. 45 families representing and That's only children. Hicksville? That's yeah. Yeah, there's a couple people in the country that have Hicksville addresses, but uh -huh. most of them are actually within the village limit. So as long as I know by the end of November, because we'll still go December for sure, but then I'll need to know if I'm calling in January and beyond. So. How many people did you say were using the Senior Center commodities also? She had 12 duplicates. Okay. 
out of out of our list. Mm -hmm. So what kind of commodities? <clears throat> I think I asked you that, but just give me a. It varies. Like you bread. You get a tomato sauce, uh, what, an applesauce, dried beans, cereal, um, uh, the, the cardboard milk. I'm drawing a blank on that. Concentrated? Condensed? Man, yeah, it's kind of, you don't need to refrigerate until you open Powdered. Um, no, sorry, I'm just drawing a blank. Regular well, milk and a... Yeah. 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 Uh, Couple kinds of pasta. Now, this last time they got frozen, good sized frozen ham, eggs, cheese, and Chicken. frozen chickens. Um, so it it varies, and they usually get a fruit or two, canned fruit or two. How do you signed up for that? <laughs> well, it varies from month to month too. It's whatever they have to have that month is what they bring. Them. It's based on income. Qualify. Any other questions about that? I've had know. a couple people mention that to me too. I have you? Okay. In Mendota, how many years, Kent? Like 40? It was there uh, when I started back in At least 30. <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's the problem with it? They're running down and getting it and bringing it back? We just thought so. There were several in town that maybe if we eliminated one, it wouldn't be a problem. Gotcha. <laughs> Connect Church every Thursday gives away food down there. The Senior Center gives away food down there to the seniors. Christ Covered Uptown gives away food down there. And so we are sending an employee to Salido with a dump truck to get the commodities and get what they will give us and then bring it back here on a Tuesday, get it all set up and then distribute it on a Thursday. So with our situation, it's just a matter of time. I understand. So. We can go up and bag it. We can get enough people to bag it for us. Volunteers to bag it. 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 Bag Say yeah or nay, right? So I figure next month or next but meeting, we the next, next meeting, meeting yeah. we better, yeah. better on yeah. 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 We Thank you for bringing that. Lane. Thanks yeah. for coming and bringing that up, because other people might feel the same way and want to well, contact us. Just mention it. Okay. Want to settle it now, Diane? Just yeah, I asked Gerald to put it on the agenda in November, and we can discuss it, <coughs> make a decision, I guess. Okay, anything else from anybody? I'm making a motion to adjourn. I second that. How's that, Cheryl? Roll call, please. Baker? Yes. Jones? Yes. Ridgeway? Absolutely. Barth? Yes. Beverly? Yes. Bassett? Yes. Let's delay the same thing again. He's got more in m and